Hello and welcome back. So today we're going to talk about uh, laugh tracks and mind control. Because we know that laughter is contagious and those in power uh, also know this. So the elites can present us with television that is uh, immoral, unethical, and even straight evil. Um, but using laugh tracks is a way uh, to kind of desensitize us to the evil that's being presented in front of us. So today we're going to look at a couple examples from Seinfeld. Alright, so first we're going to look at an example of one of probably everyone's favorite Seinfeld episodes, uh, The Soup Nazi. Now, for anybody that remembers this episode, uh, this episode was really funny. When you watch the laugh track, it's it's really, really hilarious. But when you watch it without, it really brings a whole nother level to what's going on. So let's dive right in and see what happens. We ready to go? Yes, please, please let's go. We're in the mood for a cheeseburger. No, we gotta go to the soup place. What soup place? Uh, there's a soup stand. Kramer's been going there. He's always raving. I finally got a chance to go there the other day, and I tell you this, you will be stunned. Stunned by soup? You can't eat this soup standing up. Your knees buckle. There's only one caveat. The guy who runs a place is a little temperamental, especially about the ordering procedure. He's secretly referred to as the soup Nazi. All right, I'm going to stop right there. Okay, so... It's really, really disrespectful to call anybody a Nazi, um, especially to call someone a Nazi just because of the way that they run their store and that they're maybe a little more strict on how they do things. Um, this is that's just really inappropriate behavior. But let's move on. Why? What happens if you don't order right? He yells and you don't get your soup. He yells and you don't get just your soup. Okay, that doesn't make him a Nazi, but fine. okay. All right, all right, let's let's go over that again. All right. Oh. As you walk in the place, move immediately to your right. So the main thing is to keep the line moving. I say, you hold out your money, speak your soup in a loud, clear voice, step to the left and receive. So, right. Very important not to embellish on your order. No extraneous comment. No question. No compliment. Okay, so I want to be very clear here that they all know how to order. They have all gone over the ordering procedure. They know exactly how to do it. It's really, really simple. Like, I'm really scared. Just say your order and pay for it and leave. Medium turkey chili. Medium crab bisque. So you see, it's really simple. They uh, display their order. They get their order. And let's see what George here does. You didn't get any bread. Just He's like, oh, I didn't get any bread. And Jerry here is like, okay, just leave it because <laughs> the ordering procedure is really simple. Don't don't screw it up. Forget it. Let it go. Excuse of course, me, he has to uh, say something. I I forgot my bread. Bread, two dollars extra. Okay, so the guy here, the gentleman, he tells him two dollars extra if you want bread, two dollars. Two dollars. Everyone in front of me got free bread. You want bread? Yes, please. Three dollars. Okay, so now he tells him it's three dollars. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna keep asking me these questions, <laughs> like it's it's really really simple. Just. They're making it more complicated than it has to be. Nothing for you. And it's not like he got stolen from. Like, he got his money back. But this is what happens when you come to this guy's soup store and you can't follow the basic procedure of ordering, is that you don't get your soup. And they talked about this. Like, they had uh, two, at least two conversations about the ordering procedure, and because they can't do it right, they didn't get their soup. It's really, really simple. It doesn't make him a Nazi. Alright, so they come back. Good afternoon. One large crab bisque to go. Mind you, this guy's just um, an immigrant to this country who has really, really good soup and he's just trying to make a living. I'm sure he has a wife and kids that he's trying to look after. And the reason why he is so strict about the ordering procedure is that he doesn't want people waiting in line. He wants to get through as many customers as he can because that's it's business, right? But when you have people like this that come in and just have to complicate their orders and call this guy a Nazi behind his back just because they don't like the way that he runs his restaurant, it's it's extremely rude and disrespectful behavior. The thing is, like when you when you watch this with a laugh track, you think it's really funny, and you're like, "Wow, this guy's so strict. He's he's a Nazi. He's a soup Nazi." And you laugh about it, but it's it, the truth is that these guys are being really dicks. They're they're being really really rude to this guy, and it's it's painfully obvious when you start watching it without the laugh track. Red, beautiful. You're pushing your luck, little man. 
Vegeta, like, why would you even bring up the bread? Sorry. Thank like, you. Just, just Thank get you. lost. Like, you're, you're being, yeah. All right, now let's talk about Elaine. Now, Elaine um, cannot follow a single order if her life depended on it. Elaine is probably the worst person in this episode. Elaine knows the ordering procedure and just watch the way that she handles this. Um, uh... Oh, oh, one mulligatani and, um, what is that right there? Is that lima bean? Yes. Never been a big fan. All right, so she's holding up people in line, and she's making vomiting faces in front of this gentleman. Like, extremely rude, extremely, extremely rude. You know what? Does, has anyone ever told you look exactly like Al Pacino? You know, scent of a woman. hoo ah hoo -ah. You're making vomiting faces Very in front good. of him. Very good. You know something? Not good for you. And good. Good for him for calling her out. Like, you're holding up a line. Like, get out of here. Like, if you're going to order soup, come in and get your soup. But don't hold up my line and, and start making vomiting faces and start, start asking all these questions. Like, that's, it, it's, it's crazy how different it is when you watch just the, the laugh track. All right, next. One year. All right, so first of all, uh, this girl's way out of his league, straight up. Uh oh. What is this? You're kissing in my line? Nobody kisses in my line. Which is allowed. He's allowed to say, like he's the he's the business owner. He can say no kissing in my line. It's his restaurant. I can kiss anywhere I want to. You just cut yourself a soup. How dare you? How dare you leave it? All right now, she's the only rational one in this episode because she's the one where she goes, "Wow, I really don't like this guy." I don't like this guy who's selling me soup, so I'm going to leave his establishment and go find somewhere else to get soup. It's literally the most rational thing that someone could do. Now watch what Jerry does here. Watch this kind of behavior. Do I know you? Do I know you? Like, that's such an awful thing to say to a woman. Like, that's that's probably one of the most disrespectful things that you could say to a girl that you're going on a date with, is that you could choose soup over a woman. And then, to end the entire episode off, stupid Elaine has to come back and just ruin everything for him. Look at that smirk. Look at that. That's the face... Of, here, you know, I'm going to go back to that for a second, just because some of you missed that. That's the face of evil. That's the face of, uh, of something that spawns from evil. You. you think you can get soup? And why would she come back? Please, you're wasting everyone's Why time. would you come back if you hate his restaurant? I can make my own soup. Five cups, chopped porcini mushrooms, half a cup of olive oil, three pounds of celery. That is my recipe for a wild mushroom. Yeah, that's right. We got them all. Cold cucumbers, corn and crab chowder, mulligatani. Mulligatani? Get through, no more soup, no more soup, no. Oh, awful. She literally took took his recipe, stole it from him, and is now going to put him out of business just because he did not provide her with soup. That is immensely evil, what she did. Is that she went into an establishment where you have a hardworking man providing for his family. And Elaine because she did not like the way that he ran his store, decided to steal his recipe and put him out of business. And the fact that this was shown on live on television for, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of viewers that tuned in, that's crazy. Like, this is, this is not normal behavior that people should be doing, but you throw the laugh track over top of it and people think it's funny, but when you watch it without the laugh track, you're like, wow, these people are really disrespectful. Like, I would not want to hang out with any of these people, ever. This Jelly. one's really scary, by the way. It's a, it's actually pretty frightening. So Jelly. just be warned. There's there's nothing funny about this scene. So there's a shrine on the wall of Elaine. This guy's creepy as hell. Oh, God. It's you. You scared me. Good. Fear is our most primal emotion. He's a weirdo. You left your door open. I know. I like to encourage intruders. Uh, uh, what is all this? Uh, do you like it? My home is a shrine to you. Where did you... All right, now, anybody with brain cells knows that this situation is trouble. 
that this is like a very, very scary situation for a woman. And uh, there's nothing funny about it. And the only reason that people would laugh is because there's a laugh track over it. Get all these pictures. This is, this is evil. A telephoto lens. Coming out of your office, your apartment, shopping, showering. He admits to taking photos of her showering. I developed them myself in my dark room. Would you, uh, would you like to see? In the dark room? Oh, uh, no, thank you. Not right now. I'm a day person. Yeah, like this is a really frightening scene. Like honestly, this kind of gives me chills. Like it's just, it's so disgusting. Right? It's absolutely disgusting. Why? Well, I don't know. You just don't uh, seem yourself. Who am I? Who am I supposed to be? That's oh. a good question. Good question. It's very uh, existential. <laughs> Who are you? Who am I? Yeah. Well. What are you doing here? Oh, nothing. I just uh, stopped by to chat. You know, shoot the breeze. Were you able to get those opera tickets to Pagliacci from that friend of yours? I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, uh. No, he couldn't get them. We're not going. Really? Oh! You know, oh. I just remembered. I gotta go. I, uh, left something on the gas, the lights. Something is on. Yeah, like, anybody watching this is, is thinking, like, anybody watching this without the laugh track is thinking, Elaine, get out of there. Like, everyone is, think, is thinking... Like, this is such a bad situation for her. This is such a scary... And, and this, this kind of situations happen in real life. Like, this is a real thing that happens. And uh, there's nothing funny about it. There's nothing funny about so it. I'm just gonna get but the, this uh, was on a uh, comedy show that, that hundreds of thousands of people would watch. Uh, I'm in Maine. <laughs> He's a clown whose wife is unfaithful to him. Do you think I'm a clown? Why is he blocking the door? Like this isn't this isn't funny. Do I think you're a clown. No, <laughs> none of it's bad to be a clown. If it's bad to be a clown, then you are definitely not a clown. But if it's if it's good to be a clown, then I would you know have to rethink the whole thing. You've betrayed me with another, haven't you, Netta? Who is he? I want you to tell me who he is. I want his name. Tell me his name. Oh, like any man would ever look at me. Oh. Like, that's a really, really frightening scene. And that's from Seinfeld. That's from uh, a comedy show. Nothing funny about that. Nothing, nothing, nothing funny about that. When you watch that scene without the laugh track, what it is is it's desensitizing us to what's really in front of our eyes. There's nothing funny about that scene. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, definitely keep looking out there on YouTube for shows uh, that take out the laugh track and see how it affects the atmosphere of the show. And you'll see that there is some serious cases of immorality and unethical behavior that gets normalized from the laugh track. So definitely stay aware of it. Know what's going on around you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.